Hello, Facebook. Welcome. Welcome to This World is Not Our Home. Just want to give people a minute to find me. I'm Christy. Um, I have Love Yoga to Go, an on the go yoga studio. Um, I practice in couple of different places in my area in Missouri and um, I also uh, practice on Facebook live so um, let me just give you a couple of things getting ready to come up so you'll have some uh, information that you might be interested in if you're in the area um, so Sunday afternoon Facebook live you don't have to be in the area for this um, in Christie's yoga group and you can find that through my um, Facebook page uh, love yoga to go uh, I'm going to do a pop-up gentle flow at 3.30 central time, so 4.30 um, east coast time, and you guys can figure it out if you're on the west coast. Um, also, I am hoping in a few weeks, maybe, to have a new platform uh, where I might do like a four-class series and um, for adults. So um, anyway, I will be letting you know about that. And... Um, Harrisonville, Missouri, we're moving because Real Yoga is closing and um, I won't have a place to uh, practice there with folks live. So um, I'm not sure when that's going to happen, but probably on Fridays at 930 at the United Methodist Church um, there in Harrisonville. So if you're local, those are some places. That's one place that you can practice with me live and the pop up and the new platform will be uh, virtual, so the new platform is through Zoom. And Sunday's pop-up at 3.30 Central Time will be in my um, Christie's Yoga group. So, there we go. That's all the housekeeping I think I have. Um, so, anyway, it's a beautiful day, beautiful first day of fall in Missouri. And I got buzzed by Hummer when I was uh, setting up, so who knows. If the Hummer flies by and buzzes me, you know, we'll just take it as it comes. So... Ah, welcome. Ah, welcome. Thank you for being here. And um, let's come into a place of stillness. Just quieting down the mind. Releasing any thoughts you have. Any resistance you can let go. Release any stress, any worries. Lowering your gaze, closing your eyes. Just coming into that place of stillness wherever you are. Mm, there's some farm equipment. I think he's on the other road. So we're outside. It's beautiful. Um. Yep, he's going down the other road. He's come out. Okay, so, um, just resisting any stress, any worry, uh, letting it go. Tuning into your breath. Taking your breath down deep into your belly, expanding out to your ribs, to your sitting bones, to hip flexors. Feeling it rise up to the heart center. And exhaling it out from the heart center all the way down. Just do that again. Maybe this time you maybe even make an audible. <sighs> and let it all go. One more time. Inhaling deep into the belly. Expanding down to the hip flexors, sitting bones. Up to the heart center. Opening the mouth just a wee bit. Let's take a moment to do a couple of shoulder rolls, maybe just down and back, just around, just a little movement. You can do this wherever you are. So, you're sitting at your desk, you're sitting in your car parked, sitting outside, sitting inside, on the couch, just reverse directions. Okay, just 
take our fingers. We got two hands here. Um, let's do a little finger wiggle. Just stretching out wide, maybe wiggling the fingers a little bit. Maybe making some fists, opening and closing our fists. Just getting some stretch in. Maybe even take out some clasping the hands and stretching out. Hello. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hi. <laughs> okay. Just reaching out, rounding the shoulders a little bit. Taking a couple of breaths here. And then wrapping them, maybe let's stretch out our arms wide. Bring it in, cross one hand over the top. Give ourselves a little hug if you've got room to do that. If not, you can just bring them in. Just stretch our shoulder blades wide, reaching out a little bit, just stretching our shoulders. Opening back up, flipping the hands across shoulders the other way. Just taking a couple of breaths each way. Coming into just two or three moments of stillness here. And release hands back down to lap. Rooting down through the sitting bones. Rising up nice and tall, rounding those shoulders out. Sitting up nice and tall with a nice long spine, but also resting at the same time. Take our breath nice and deep, slowing down, slowing down for a few minutes on your Tuesday. Tuesday morning, this world is not our home. Oh, okay, so last week on Friday, I went to this little book by Charles Spurgeon, All of Grace, and we talked about faith, and we talked about one aspect of faith, and um, I'm going to move on to the next aspect of faith that Pastor Spurgeon speaks of here. So um, he says, what is faith? It is made up of three things. Knowledge, and we talked about that um, Friday. Belief, which we'll talk about today. And trust, and we'll talk about trust on Friday. So three things, knowledge, and Hebrews 10, 17 talks about how faith comes, comes by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. So that's how, you know, that's how the hearing and that's how the belief comes, because we have to first hear the word of God in order to believe. So, um, let's see. So, knowledge, belief, and trust. Let's see if there's anything else I want to reiterate from this on uh, faith. And I don't know that there is. So then, um, the mind goes on to believe. We believe that these things are true. The soul believes that God is and that he hears the cries of sincere hearts. That is the gospel from God, the justification by faith, the just as if I'd never sinned. It's an easy way to remember that. There's a lot more you know, to that definition, but that's just a nice, simple um, definition for our purposes right now. So, um, justification by faith is the grand truth which God has revealed in the last days by His Spirit more clearly than ever before. We can rest in that. You know, in the days of old, in the Old Testament, Jesus had not been revealed. Jesus had not come to earth. He had not lived His perfect sinless life. He had not died, been resurrected, and um, taken our sin to the cross in our place. Um, so they didn't have that. All they had was a promise and a hope that that was actually going to happen. But we actually have, in this book, in the Holy Word of God, we actually have history on our side. And we know that it has happened because there is so much evidence for uh, for the fact that Jesus has come to this earth and for his uh, crucifixion and resurrection. But in the last, in the days of old, they didn't have that. They had prophecies all throughout the Old Testament. 
so God has revealed his perfect plan more clearly than ever before because of that. So then Spurgeon goes on to say, Then the heart believes that Jesus is verily and in truth our God and Savior. And that word verily is kind of archaic, but it means truly and certainly. So the heart, when the Spirit convicts us and draws us to him, the heart believes that Jesus is truly and certainly God and Savior. Let's take a moment to breathe that in. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, that your spirit reveals more clearly than ever before that Jesus is, in fact, God and Savior, and the Redeemer of men, the prophet, the priest, and the King of his people. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All this is accepted as true, as sure truth, not to be called into question. I pray that you may at once come to this. Get firmly to believe that the blood of Jesus Christ God's dear Son cleanses us all from sin, that his sacrifice is complete. There is no more sacrifice needed. Jesus, the Lamb of God, was the perfect sacrifice. Thank you, Jesus. And that it is fully accepted of God on man's behalf, so that he that believeth on Jesus Christ is not condemned. Believe these truths as you believe any other statements. For the difference between common faith and saving faith lies mainly in the subject upon which it is exercised. So it lies mainly in the belief on Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Believe the witness of God just as you believe the testimony of your own father or friend. You know, we have friends and family and people tell us things that happen all the time and unless there's a reason to doubt it we trust them we trust what they say is true and the evidence for God's word being true there is there is more evidence for that than anything else any other piece of literature um, science is on the side of creation and I know that's hard to believe because we go to government school and we hear the evolution, you know, the theory of evolution, but it honestly takes more faith, faith to believe in that evolution than it does in a perfect creator that created us from the beginning, from the beginning of our time because God is not confined by time. So we should believe the witness of God just as if, or maybe even more so than we would believe our father or friend or anybody else that tells us something. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. Belief. We must believe in order to have faith. So I'm going to read through some scriptures that talk about belief. And if your eyes are not closed or your gaze is not lowered, Go ahead and return to that, maybe even putting your hand on your heart. Feeling the breath of life, the breath that God breathed into us, flowing through our bodies, knowing that the blood, the beating of the heart, every system that he designed, every organ within our body, he placed perfectly. Sometimes it's easy to forget God's presence and power when we face uncertain and difficult times. Our faith falters and we doubt that God is with us. Sometimes we doubt that He's real. Sometimes we doubt that He's real. But faith brings us into belief. When we begin to doubt, let's go to those 
verses that talk about believing, drawing close to God so that he will draw close to us. Acts 16.31 They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. I believe this is when, um, maybe when uh, Cornelius was being uh, saved. I'm not sure. I just went through and found some verses, so uh, I'm not going to give much commentary. Now, faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance of what we do not see. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord in Isaiah 43, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. My outdoor kitties are hungry. And understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Oh, hello, kitty jump. All right. <laughs> live, Facebook Live, folks. Okay. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. You believe also, whoops, well, that was, well, there we are. Okay. <laughs> Okay, John 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled, Jesus says. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Believe also in me, Jesus says. John 20. But these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. By believing. So by having faith, beginning with knowledge, finding belief, and then we'll talk about trust next week. Okay, so that's what I've got. Finding faith. Having knowledge that comes from the scriptures and from the Holy Spirit piercing and pricking your hearts. As long as that's in alignment with the word. Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then next week we'll talk about trust. On Friday we'll talk about trust at 1 p.m. So. We believe that Jesus Christ will do what he has promised. We can believe that. Faith is believing that Christ is what he is said to be and that he will do what he has promised to do. And then expect this of him. That is faith. Expecting that God, that Christ will do what he has promised. Christ has promised to cast out none that come to him. It is certain that he will not cast us out if we come to him. Faith believes that since Jesus said, the water that I give shall give him shall be in him, a well of water springing up to everlasting life. And we get this living water from Christ. It will abide in us and will well up within us in streams of holy life. Whatever Christ has promised to do, he will do, and we must believe this, so as to look for pardon, justification, preservation, and eternal glory from his hands according to, according as he has promised them to believers in him. As believers, we have that promise. So just take a moment, soften down your shoulders again if they're not, roll them back hands on your heart center. 
believing in the promises of Jesus Christ, standing on his word that is true. Having faith in the unseen, but in the evidence all around us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us faith, for giving us knowledge in God's Word, and for sending the Holy Spirit that works in our heart to draw us closer to you. Thank you for giving us belief so that we can know that your Word is true. And thank you for the trust that I'll talk about on Friday that we can trust you, that we can trust what you say, and that we can trust your promises, that we can believe on your promises, and that we can know that they're true. Help us to live for you every single day. Help us to glorify your name. Thank you so much for the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed to take our sin, mine, yours, everyone's sin. That there is none perfect, not one, except for the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for taking that sin to the cross. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Take another breath in. Nice deep, rising up from the hip bones, all the way up to the throat. Exhaling it out. Thank you for joining me today. This is Christy with Love Yoga To Go. Again, quick reminder, pop up at 3.30 Central Time on Christy's Yoga Group on Facebook Live. Look for um, information about in-person classes in Harrisonville and look for a new platform to come. So, have a great Tuesday. God bless.